if your team is top of the league. Hit the like button on this video. Arsenal 4, Leeds 1, maintaining our 8-point lead at the top. Let's get into my 5 at 5. Number 1, Super 7. Cast your minds back to February. Man City come to the Emirates Stadium, a top of the table clash, and everyone says this is going to be the true test of Arsenal. And we failed that test. We lost 3-1. And then it was all about the bounce back. We struggled to a win against Villa. It didn't look great. Leicester, the next game, only a 1-0, a professional game away from home. But you know what? Now that we're well and truly over that blip, how well Arsenal bounced back from that disappointment against Man City. Well, let's be honest, that defeat was our making with the mistakes that we made. Since then, we've won seven games on the trot, beating Villa, Leicester, Everton, Bournemouth, Fulham, Palace, Leeds. And you might look at those seven games and say, well, yeah, on paper, you should win every single one of those. But games aren't played on paper. Four of those games have been at home. Three of them have been away. One of them, Fulham, which I thought would be a really tricky game. But the amazing thing is, not even one draw in those seven games. What an incredible response to the disappointment of being beaten by Man City, where people thought we'd start to unravel. And we know it hasn't been easy. In some of those games, we've had to dig really, really deep. Memories of the way we won at Villa and the way we won against Bournemouth. If we do go and complete this dream of winning the Premier League, they will be very, very large components of that highlights video because they really gave the club, the fans, the players, loads of belief. And the amazing thing as well is that we haven't done this and scraped through. Yes, against Villa and then Leicester in the aftermath of how it felt to lose against City, we weren't on top form. But overall in these seven games, our goal difference has been 23 goals scored, just five conceded, which has helped us massively boost our goal difference and get to within two goals of Man City's goal difference. Arsenal's consistency and response has been absolutely brilliant. Up next, a massive test at Anfield. Number two, and I want to speak about Gabriel Martinelli because I feel like I haven't been able to compliment him and sing his praises enough this season. Since his return from the World Cup, he didn't hit the ground running, like I said in my match reaction yesterday, but I called out how well he played, especially in the first 30 minutes, off the ball defensively for Arsenal to earn the right to go and do the business going forward. Not only did he get the assist, he had 100% crossing accuracy, 100% long ball accuracy, 100% shooting accuracy, six recoveries of the ball. That was more than Thomas Partey, for God's sake. Gabriel Martinelli is well and truly back, having the best season of his career, delivering on all of the promise that all of us saw from a very, very young age when he wasn't a guaranteed starter in the team. Absolutely brilliant performance from him yesterday, especially with Saka not playing. He stepped it up even though the person who came in for Saka, whether you say it's Trossard or uh, Jesus, they're both incredible as well. But it felt like Martinelli realised that he would need to dig even deeper and do more for the team, and he did exactly that. Well played, Gabriel Martinelli. Number three, talking of Thomas Partey. Look, I spoke about that game against Man City earlier this season when we lost. The big, big thing there was that we didn't have Thomas Partey. So it makes a lot of sense to me 3-0 up, 60 minutes on the clock, at home to Leeds, Thomas Partey comes straight off. No risking him. That shows how valuable he is to the team and Mikel Arteta knows it. So I completely understand him having to come off after 60 minutes because with Anfield looming, we cannot risk Thomas Partey picking up an injury. And look at his performance. 96% pass accuracy. He had five recoveries. Um, eight passes into the final third, 100% long ball accuracy. Thomas Partey can do it all. And you know what? That Casemiro versus Thomas Partey debate for this season, well and truly dead. Whilst Casemiro is suspended, Thomas Partey is producing masterclasses. And we saw after he went off, Arsenal looked instantly more vulnerable. And Leeds, within about 15 minutes, got their goal after he went off. It's so clear just how much better we are when we've got Thomas Partey in the team. So, all eyes on Anfield now to see what Thomas Partey can do there. And they'll be hurting. Don't get me wrong. 
after being battered by Man City, Liverpool will be hurting or be looking to restore some pride, especially at Anfield. So we're going to need Thomas Partey, not just in this game, for the rest of the season, to keep on dropping these masterclasses. And for me, if he carries on, undoubtedly takes that spot in the team of the season. Thomas Partey, absolute monster. Number four, six wins and two draws. That is all we need to win the league. And I know I'm getting carried away. I'm looking eight games into the future out of the nine remaining, but it's hard not to. Who isn't getting excited right now? Let me know in the comments below. Be really, really honest with me, because I spoke to a few Arsenal fans after the Leeds game, and I was impressed with actually how objective Arsenal fans are being. Some people like me are still quite scared, still not 100% convinced. Let me know in the comments below. Do you truly believe we're going to win the league? And what do you think is going to happen in the game at the Etihad? The way I see it, if we manage to draw that game, we only need to win six and draw one from our remaining games. If we avoid defeat, if we draw. I'm not even looking to win that game away at the Etihad. It's more for me about not losing. And if we do that, it's a massive blow to Man City because that is going to be one hell of a six-pointer. If we do get the six wins and two draws, with one of those draws being at Man City in our next eight games, that means we'll wrap up the league away at Nottingham Forest. And part of me thinks, actually, do you know what? I want it to be at Arsenal. We've won the league everywhere. We've won it at Old Trafford. We've won it at Stamford Bridge. We've won it at Anfield. We've won it at White Hart Lane. I want to go and win it at the home of Arsenal FC again. Let's go and win it at the Emirates Stadium. Let me know what you think is going to happen, whether we're going to win it, and what that crucial, crucial game against Man City is going to bring. Are we going to manage to avoid defeat? It's exciting times, man. Come on, Arsenal. Number five, and yes, I am guilty of building up that pressure and excitement about winning the league. Obviously, the last thing I spoke about was our journey to how we can go and do that with six wins and two draws. But what I would say is that no matter what happens this season, what Mikel Arteta has done at this club is nothing short of monstrous, just amazing what he's managed to do. We've already got more wins and more points after 29 games this season than we did in the entirety of last season. Last season, we had 22 wins and 69 points. This season, we're already on 23 wins and 72 points. And we've got nine games left. That's unbelievable. If I had asked anyone what you think we'll get for our points tally, if I told you we had 69 points last season, no one would have been able to see what Arteta has managed to make this team achieve this season. 22 wins in 38 and 23 wins in 29. It's unbelievable. And what I would say is that it seems like a lot of the media and a lot of other fans are positioning themselves in a way to almost potentially slay Arsenal if we don't win it. And for me, I'm not going to accept that. Even if we don't win the league, this season has been an incredible forward-moving improvement for Arteta and Arsenal. And I'm very excited about the future. Yes, it will be hard. Other big clubs will come back stronger. Who knows, they might have new owners, etc. And they will splash the cash. But there's no reason to be negative as an Arsenal fan, even if this season doesn't end up going the way we want it to go. The players deserve unbelievable credit. And so does Mikel Arteta, who for me is not getting the praise that he deserves. He's done an incredible job. And I think we've seen that being at the games with the atmosphere at home better than it's ever been. And one of the chants where everyone joins in is when we're all singing, we've got Super Mikel Arteta. Mikel Arteta, incredible job no matter what happens. He is the man. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. And I cannot wait to see what happens away at Anfield Put your predictions in the comments below for that game. And if anyone gets it right, I'll reach out to you and you can contribute one of your own points on one of my five at fives after the Liverpool game. Take care. Up the Arsenal.